Hey everybody, Andrew Hogue here, your security, privacy, and forensics expert. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through a tutorial on how to generate your own software bill of material for a Node.js application in Cyclone DX format. You can follow along on my personal website, Don't Panic. Just go out to andrewhogue.com, click blog, and then click on how to generate a Node.js SBOM in Cyclone DX format. Let's dive right in. I'm gonna take you through the complete steps, assuming that you have nothing set up on your system today. I'm running on a Mac, but you could just as easily run this on Windows or Linux. So at a high level, we're gonna go ahead and download the iOS triage source code. We're gonna install Node.js runtime, which you're going to need both for the Node.js application, but also for the Cyclone DX tool. And then we're gonna globally install the Cyclone DX tool. And then lastly, we'll generate the software bill material. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is download the iOS triage source code. I use GitHub for my source code, as do millions of other developers. And with systems like Linux and Mac, you're going to have the Git utility already built in. So you can just take a quick look and see. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go out to the iOS triage repository. It's linked there in the blog. And you can see here that there's a number of options on how you wanna download it. You could simply download the zip file and unzip it, or because you have Git installed, you can simply copy this URL, pop back over, and download the code. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this software now, but let's go ahead and put it in its own folder. You can put it anywhere that you want, but for this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and use SBOM example in my home directory. So we'll make that directory, we'll go ahead and change into that directory, and then from that URL that you copied earlier from GitHub, you can simply come out here and say git clone and clone that repository. So this is gonna download the source code and you'll see now that there's a directory in this uh, folder called iOS triage. We can log into that and you can see all the source code is there. All right, so the next step that you wanna do is actually install Node.js. Now, there's a number of different ways you can do it. You can literally just hop right out to the Node.js website download the installer for your particular platform, install it, and then you'll be up and running with that particular version. In this instance, LTS is your best option. These are the long-term support versions of Node.js, and that just means you know that you'll get updates and things of that sort for a long time. Now, if you plan on following along with additional tutorials I have in the future, or you wanna do some coding on your own, what I would actually recommend is using a version manager and the one that's most popular, the one that I use is called NVM. So you can simply follow the instructions that are out on their website, which I've linked to in the blog. Uh, and since I already have it installed, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this first step. I'm gonna go ahead and install the latest version of Node with the NVM uh, package manager. You just simply type NVM install and do dash dash LTS. And now that you can see it's installed, I'm on the latest version 16.17.0, and it actually went ahead and ran that for me. Now. In the future, if you open up your terminal and node's not running, you can simply just go nvm use and then simply tell it what version you wanna use. This can also be really helpful if certain applications have been built with older versions of the runtime, and so you can easily switch between different versions. And if you wanna just double check to see what you're up and running, you can just type node dash dash version, and there you go. So, next thing that we wanna do is go ahead and install the Cyclone DX tool itself. Uh, and so we're going to actually use something called NPM. NPM stands for Node Package Manager. When you installed Node.js, the NPM program itself was installed as well. Now you can go out there and simply install software or packages that you may need. In this particular instance, we're gonna go ahead and install it globally, which is what the minus G stands for. So we're just saying, install this globally, the Cyclone DX uh, bomb tool. And you can see here, it'll think for a second, It'll download all of the different uh, dependencies. So interestingly, this has 76 different packages, 77 in total, including the utility itself. Um, and NPMs are actually a really great tool. There's some built-in functionality for looking at all your dependencies, managing them and updating them, updating ones that have security issues. So now we've got our source code downloaded. We've got Node installed. We have our Cyclone DX bomb tool installed. I'm gonna do one more step. 
I'm gonna go ahead and run npm install. So what that does is, because we're inside a uh, node application, it's going to look at a list of packages that the application needs, and then it's going to install all of them. Just type npm install, you'll see that it downloads everything, and rather embarrassingly, I have 18 vulnerabilities in the current version. This will actually make for a really great demo for this series, which over time I will go out there, I will make the different updates, and then I'll get those actually pushed out so nobody downloads this and has any vulnerable software on their computer. Now, everything's installed. You can see there are 268 packages installed. It took about two seconds. And now we're ready to generate our first software build material. So how do you do that? Well, it's really straightforward. Since we've already installed the Cyclone DX bomb tool, we're simply going to run Cyclone DX dash node. And then, as I mentioned earlier, it outputs in both JSON and XML format. And in this particular instance, we're just gonna output it in JSON format. So type in that command, hit enter, it's pretty fast. And one of the reasons is Node actually has its own package files. So you've got your package.json uh, that lists off the packages and some other uh, things that the developer configures about tests and things of that sort. So you can see the different dependencies. There's not that many for this. And then you actually have the packages lock. So as you saw earlier, 268 dependencies were actually installed. And to get an absolute snapshot of exactly what's installed, npm created the packages lock. And so this particular file you can see, here's all of the different dependencies installed in the application. So what the Cyclone DX tool is gonna do is read that packaging information, transform it into the Cyclone DX format, and then save it out in your current directory as bomb.json. And you could call that anything that you wanted. But let's go ahead and take a look. As you may have noticed, I've been using a tool called JQ to look at JSON files. That's a really great utility if you start working on the command line. I'd suggest you install it. It's very, very powerful. I put the instructions down here if you're on a Mac on how to install it, but you can also just go to their website and there's many other ways you can install it for different systems. Let's take a look at the bomb.json and then we'll just pipe that through less because it's gonna be a long file. I wanna be able to show everything to you guys on the screen. So as I mentioned, when you get into a Cyclone DX file, there's some header information at the top. It lets you know what, what the actual specification is, what version you're on, generates a serial number, which is optional, uh, the version information, timestamps, et cetera, and then the tool that was used and the specific version of that tool. And then you can see that we ran it against a particular application. This is the information specifically about iOS triage. You can see I created it. You can see the current version, a little description licenses, et cetera, similar to what we saw earlier. And then you have the list of components. Uh, here, the very first one, as I mentioned earlier, is the async library. And I'm not gonna go over it again. You, we just reviewed it earlier in the video. But if you go through here, there's a significant amount of information about all of the different dependencies, and they're properly output in the Cyclone DX format. So that's it for today. I hope you found it useful, and thanks for watching. Until next time.